Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema making that surprise announcement that she's leaving the Democratic Party and registering as an independent. Sinema explained her decision in an op-ed in the Arizona Republic, writing, pressures in both parties pull leaders to the edges, allowing the loudest, most extreme voices to determine their respective parties' priorities and expecting the rest of us to fall in line. Sinema spoke to CNN's Jake Tapper about her decision and her future. I've decided to leave that partisan process and really just focus on the work that I think matters to Arizona and to our country, which is solving problems and getting things done. So when I come to work each day, it'll be the same. I'm going to still come to work and hopefully serve on uh, the same committees I've been serving on and continue to work well with my colleagues of both political parties. ABC's Jay O'Brien joins me now from Capitol Hill with more. So, Jay, Democrats had just won an outright majority earlier this week in the Senate and are about to lose control of the House. So what does this decision do, you think, for President Biden's agenda moving forward? Well, it's whiplash, as you said, for Senate Democrats. Right after that um, runoff election in Georgia, Chuck Schumer comes out. He celebrates the fact that Democrats in the Senate now have this 51-seat majority. That was just Wednesday. Now it's Friday, and the ground is shifted beneath Senate Democrats' feet. The good news, if you're a Democrat in the Senate, is that you still can't, you still keep your majority, right? You don't have the 51-seat majority officially that you may have technically had early on, depending upon what Kirsten Sinema decides to do with who she caucuses with. But you still have the majority on the committees that Kirsten Sinema sat on because she said she wants to keep her committee assignments, and Chuck Schumer has said that she will keep her committee assignments. You also have the majority because you can pass pieces of legislation with the vice president breaking the tie in many cases. That said, it does does change the breathing room that Senate Democrats had when they picked up that 51 seat majority that they said previously they didn't have to necessarily uh, um, kowtow to Joe Manchin as much as they did previously, who was that frequent holdout vote, or Cinema, who was a holdout vote in her own right. That breathing room now, Kira, has shrunk given Cinema's position of shifting her affiliation from Democrat to independent. So, what are you hearing on Capitol Hill in response to this announcement? Well, one of the things we're hearing from Cinema's colleagues in the Senate, Senate Democrats, is that some were not surprised by this announcement. A.B. Klomachar, Democrat of Minnesota, said that she wasn't surprised by this. She told CNN because Kirsten Cinema has made it a point to forge her own path as a Senate Democrat and has made a point to act independently. Chuck Schumer, in a statement, saying very much the same. Here's a little bit about what Chuck Schumer said. He said that Kirsten Cinema largely has been independent. Here it is. Kirsten is independent. That's how she's always been. I believe she's a good and effective senator, and I'm looking forward to a, to a productive session in the new Democratic majority in the Senate. So it, it, it doesn't go as far as to express disappointment as to what Cinema did. Frankly, they're expressing that they weren't surprised. The choice now is Cinema's. Who does she caucus with? And on Capitol Hill, caucusing just means, as you know, Kira, who do you hang out with? Does Kirsten Cinema stay with the Democrats despite being an independent, which is what Bernie Sanders and Angus King, who are both independents, do? Does she caucus with the Republicans, or does she try to forge her own path and stay somewhat in the middle? It'll be interesting to watch. You know, her op-ed seems to blame both parties, as you know. Let's just talk about the issues that she had specifically with the Democratic Party, because she's been asked numerous times why she's doing this, and she just basically, it comes down to, she says, it has to do with my values. That's it. Yeah, and she makes she takes great pains in that op-ed and in statements subsequently not to say that this is a direct rebuke of the Democratic Party, per se. Instead, she goes as far as to say, as you mentioned, that it's an indictment of the overall partisan nature in the U.S. Uh, she just gaggled with local reporters in her home state of Arizona. And here's what she said. My stand today is about joining the many Americans and lots of Arizonans, in fact, the majority of registered voters who don't believe that any political party fits them perfectly. So it's a sign that cinema is trying to forge a path and be the candidate and be the senator, both in Arizona, but also a figure nationally for those who do not see themselves aligning with either party, which cinema has said are being controlled by the further fringes of both of those parties. Now, how she takes that message to the Senate is a question that she's going to have to decide the answer to in January, Kira. Well, so what do you think this means for 2024? I mean, Re-election is right around the corner. 
Well, she's got to run for re-election in 2024, and Arizona is a contentious place to be. If you're a Democrat, there was just a close Senate race there this year. So Kirsten Sinema now faces the prospect of a Democrat running against her in the general election in 2024, a Republican also on the ballot in 2024, and her on the ballot as an independent. So it, 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 there is a potential where both of those two, the Democrat and Sinema, maybe siphon votes away from each other, maybe some moderate Republicans vote for Sinema. There's a lot in the water there, and it's early to talk about 2024, but we have to talk about 2024. But the other aspect here is that Kirsten Sinema doesn't it doesn't appear that she would have made this decision if she felt that it wasn't beneficial to her political career. So clearly she's trying to strike the tone both for her upcoming reelection but also for the future as someone who can be seen as a full moderate, Kira. Jay O'Brien up on the Hill for us. Jay, thanks so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.